And Stoicism is characterized by a rejection of pleasure as the standard of human happiness and human felicity. Stoicism takes the position that the wise man, the good man, the philosopher, is a man who lives in accordance with nature. He fears only abdicating his moral responsibility. He is not afraid of pain. He is not afraid of death. He is not afraid of poverty. He is not afraid of any of the vicissitudes of the human condition. He fears only that he should let himself down and that he should be less than a complete human being. According to the Stoics, and there are a number of Stoics, two or three or four or five, that actually develop the doctrine, but all the doctrines are quite similar, the only matter of concern to a wise and philosophic individual is the things completely under your control. You can't control the movements of the sun and the planets. You can't control whether a leaky ship sinks or makes it to port. You can't control the weather. You can't control other people. You can't control the society around you. There's only one thing and one thing only that you are in control of, and that is you. Your will, your intentions, yourself. In other words, the wise man, the truly philosophical man, is the man who is entirely in control of his own soul who takes utter and complete moral responsibility for his actions and is indifferent to everything else, not because he doesn't care about other people, not because he doesn't care about the felicity of the entire human species, but because it's not under his control. There's no use wondering or worrying about what tomorrow will bring since tomorrow isn't under your control. Do what's right today and let tomorrow take care of itself. The Stoic philosopher is the man who has liberated himself from fear. He's not afraid of death. He's not afraid of pain. He's not afraid of other people's dismissal as a fool. The only thing he cares about is that he should meet his moral obligations. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said that greatness is the perception that virtue is enough, which is an elegant and beautiful line. And he might well have stolen that from one of the Stoics, because all of the Stoics basically believe that. Virtue, moral virtue, an organized soul which pursues rationally the ends which are good for all human beings. That's the Stoic conception of virtue. They finally understand their greatness consists in the fact that they perceive that virtue is enough. We do not need wealth. We do not need sexual gratification. We do not need life itself. If moral virtue tells us that we must die in the pursuit of some good end, the protection of our family, the protection of our home, the protection of the innocent, in the doing of right, nothing should be spared, even, not even our lives. The stoic wise man is a man who has trained his soul, trained his mind, so that he is not afraid of apparent evils. He is only afraid of real evil. He is afraid of losing control of his soul. He is af afraid of being a slave to lust, to desire, to emotion. The stoic man is the honorable philosopher the man who stands at his duty and is steadfast and serious-minded. In living according to nature, what the Stoic philosopher does is examine the nature of the human condition and the nature of the world around us. He discerns his position in nature, he discerns the kind of creature that he is, and he lives in such a way as not to disgrace himself, as not to be less than what he truly could be. He won't live the swinish life that we found with Aristophanes. He wants to be, if not a god, certainly not less than human. He won't be an animal either. He will live up to the fullest potentials that human being has to offer. <laughs>